today on this old house, we are just 10 days away from turning this house over to Carol. And the question for Charlie and his crew is, will they meet the deadline? What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Dorchester, Massachusetts. A year ago, our homeowner Carol was chased out of her house from a fire. And about five months ago, Charlie and his crew started working on putting this place back together. And if Charlie stays on schedule, Carol should be moving back in in about a week. But Mark, that means a ton of work has got to get done between now and then, including right. the front right here. And you actually jumped on these stairs last week for us, or at least started. Exactly. So when we got here, the, the steps were in more dire need than we knew. Okay. There's actually a big hole uh, in the left side of the step over here. When we found loose material, we stripped all that, we got a grinder, we took that to each tread and then each riser and we knocked off, there was a paint on here before, so we took care of that. But the good news is we do have a solution. Todd over here has a liquid epoxy that he's applying to the step and I think it looks great so far. All right. Hey Todd, how you doing? Good, how are you? All right, so epoxy going on top of what Mark left you? Correct. What was your process for prepping for this? So Mark set us up here nicely with um, some finished treads. Okay, so what have you got down now, one coat? This is just one coat of a primer. This is just a priming agent to give us a nice surface to build on top of. Okay, and then what goes on top of this? We're gonna be putting another application of gray base coat into that wet base coat. Brian will seed it with a kill dried sand for non-skid capabilities for gotcha. the homeowner. Cool, all right. So Todd, talk to me about what's going on here. Has he so, got a mix already? Yeah, so what he's doing here, he's just activating the base coat, needs to be spun for about 90 seconds. Into that base coat, he'll add the hardener. Two-part system here, once you add the hardener, it'll activate which creates the, the chemical reaction for the application to cure. And once A and B come together, you've got a certain amount of time to work with it? Traditionally, yes. Today's temps are actually pretty nice. So, you know, he'll have 10, 15 minutes uh, worth of workability. Gotcha, okay. How tough's the epoxy once it's all set up? It's it's beyond resilient. You know, it, it's it's designed for cleanability impacts, chemical spills, hot tire. So your uh, your clock is ticking now, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. He'll cut it in and then he'll roll the flat and then he'll get some sand into that tread. At this point here, it, it goes goes pretty quick. Homeowner friendly? Yes and no. Yeah, it's all about the mix ratio. You know, yeah. if, if mixed incorrectly, it will not it will not cure. With these temps, he can apply all the liquid and then follow back, seed the treads and back roll to encapsulate all the granules. So let me just take a look at this. What exactly are we looking at? So this here is a kiln dried quartz granule. Yeah. We broadcast or seed this into all of our solid color systems to provide the homeowner or the commercial space with non-skid capabilities. Nicest looking sand I've ever seen. Yeah. All right. So this is just for texture, right? This, this is just is, to make it non-slip? Correct. This is for your non-skid capability. No, no strength being added here per se? N not necessarily. This will be shovelable, cleanable, UV stable yep, nice. for the homeowner. Right. You drag a shovel over this when you guys are done and that sand's not coming up? It is not coming up. It will be 100% encapsulated when, when Brian back rolls. Love it. Looks pretty good, too. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Todd. And Mark, we are one step closer to Carol coming home. All right. Or three. <laughs> or three. Thank you, Mark. All right. Keith, everyone's got a punch list. What's on yours? <laughs> so ours, we're kind of wrapping these panels up now. 
And one of the final things we're putting in is the surge protection that's required now for the new coach. So remind me, we changed all of the wiring in the house. Right. We were Everything. hoping not to. And then we figured out it was just better to do it all. And when all was said and done, it was just easier to swap it all out, have everything new and clean, and, and be done with it. So does um, today's code require surge protection with new wiring? It does. Our 2020 code does require dwelling units to have surge protection. So I'm used to sort of the big kind of unwieldy box down in the basement sure. that maybe you slap onto the side of this. So this is replacing those big unwieldy boxes? It is. So this is what it is, and that just clips in place of two breakers. Oh, look at this. So is this, what's this, grabbing the bus bar here? That grabs the neutral bar, and then that clips into the two bus bars. And this is the size of, looks like it's the size of two breakers right there. You clip it in. No kidding. And that's it. And it's got a little indicator light. So obviously green is good, and then it will light up and change color when it's time to replace it. So if I have an existing panel, and I've got two of these slots available, can I slide something like this in and cover all of the breakers in here? Absolutely, and a lot of manufacturers make that now. So whatever panel you have, you want to make sure you get the same surge that fits that panel. Wow. Huh, that's awesome. And so when I think of surge, is lightning strike is the first thing that comes to my mind, but what other surges are we worried about in this type of a situation? So around here, something like that would cause a surge for us around here would be a power line going down, something like that would cause a surge. Appliances having an issue, mm. that can be a surge from the inside causing a problem. The other one that they want to anticipate is alternative sources of energy. So solar panels, battery packs, those have the potential with more and more of those being introduced right. to create a surge in the system as well. It seems like everything has a chip. I mean, you could lose a lot of equipment in your house a with lot. a surge. Yeah. Huh. I love it. I'd give this back to you, but I need one. <laughs> <laughs> so what else is on your punch list? I know we got some fixtures uh, to kind of go A in. couple of fixtures, not too bad. Some plates, the fixtures, a little bit of paint here for it uh, to finish up, and uh, a couple things in the basement, and I think we're pretty good. Cool. Good to know. You can have it back. Thanks, Eve. <laughs> Thanks. Although it may not look like it, finishes are starting to go in all throughout the house, including our bathrooms. Hey, Renette, how are you? Hey, how, how you doing, I'm Kevin? doing all right, thank you. Yep. We've got mm -hmm. three of these bathrooms stacked on top of each other. Yep. Uh, you did the rough, and now it's time for the finishes to go in? Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting the Johnny bolts down and the wax seal. All right, so we're setting toilets today. Yeah, we're setting toilets today. And your Johnny bolts are? Attached to the closet flange. And what we do is, um, this toilet's a 12-inch rough, so we put one we put one bolt in, and we put another bolt in. Okay, so we're going to double-check our measurements, 12 there, and tw 12 there. Okay, the next thing we'll do is we'll put the wax seal in. The purpose of this wax seal is to compress the porcelain to the closet flange, so no sewer gases, ex you know, escape from underneath the toilet. Okay. The tank's got its own gasket on the bottom right there. And they got three bolts. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to line the bolts up to the hole. All three. Just leave this loose for now. All right. I'll press this down for you. Yep. I think you're there, right there. Yep, nice. Okay. 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 Now, the most important thing is uh, lining this bowl and tank on the bolts. One shot. One shot. One shot. So the name of the game is, okay, I'm going to lift the bowl up, and you're going to take the cardboard out. Cardboard is out. And then we're going to walk it over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make sure that I can see a bolt. There you go. There you go. Yeah. We did it. There you go. Then I'm going to turn it. Compressing that wax seal down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do now is put the, um, the cap on the closet bolt. It says this side up, so which is real important. Then you take this washer and you put this nut down on the bolt. You got to be careful when you go to tighten this because people have over tightened this and cracked the bolt. So it's real important to try to make it balance on both sides before you take the wrench or the crescent wrench or whatever to try to tighten it. Now I'm going to do the other side with another bolt. Okay, I'm going to tighten this side. I'm going to switch on the other side again. I'm cutting the bolts off with this mini hacksaw. Let's see if this will work. Let's 
this here a bit fit. And that will go on like this. Okay, Kevin, you can put the water on. Tank's filling up. Got a little coming into the bowl. Okay, Kevin, you might as well try flushing it. All right, let's see how we did. Not too bad. Yeah, look at that. Got the tank top right there. We got the toilet seat on. We got ourselves our working toilet, which means we can give it to the porta potty out front. Thank you, Renette. You're welcome. Nice job. Yep. Right, let's get that seat on. Wood floors were common in these old three-deckers, and we are lucky to have them pretty much throughout the entire house. But after 160 years, well, we're not so lucky with the condition they're in, but that's why we've got Josias to help us out. Hey, Josias, hey, how you Kevin, doing? How are you? All right, so these are pretty beat up, huh? They are, they are. Well, um, the condition is bad, but we can bring it to life. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, like you can tell over here is a... Uh, oh yeah, a little belly right, right there, yeah. a little valley right there, so something's pushed up. But we're gonna have a uh, cutter across, my brother's gonna cut it across. Uh, if we need to, we gotta cut it again, again this way too, and then we're gonna go straight with the grain. And you've done some of this in other rooms, you've seen the species over there. What, what are we working with? We are working with a hard pine, we believe is it. That's awesome, right? It's I mean, very expensive wood. When Charlie mentioned about this, I was like, we can save this, you know? You have to save have it like for another 50 years. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful wood, we're lucky to have it. Um, so I'm glad that you guys think you can bring it back. I'll let you get to it to make the first pass so that we see what we've got to work with. Sure, thank you. So Josiah's two passes, both at an angle to the wood. You yes. happy with what you're seeing here? And what does this tell you? Yes, uh, as you can see, we got to a, we had a low point over here. The, the have, darker spots represent low because yes, that wasn't cut. Over here. And then and this is a high spot right here. Yes, so you can tell the when we cut it across. So you can see these sort of stripes, the striations, right? That's the sandpaper cutting across these marks. So you're gonna try to get rid of these. So right now we have to cut it uh, with a grain, uh, with a 40 grit, brand new uh, belt, and then we will see if this comes out. So with the grain and a new piece of paper for the yes, machine? Yes, Alex is gonna continue with that. Job, Josiah. Let's see our, our spot. We don't have that high low, right? The dark and light, now it's consistent, but those crossed striations, they're gone. Yeah, that's the reason we use a uh, new paper, so it's like chafe it off. What's next for you? Uh, we gotta do uh, with the edges all the size and with 40 grit, same paper. Um, and then we gotta do a uh, hundred grit. Okay. Yeah. We are applying the sealer right now, and Alex is gonna roll it right now. Um, and, and what is the sealer? Is that oil or water? It's oil. Uh, and what does that do for us? It will protect the wood from water in case they drop any water. It will protect it from the water to penetrate the wood. And it's the, what, first coat of how many? First coat. It's gonna have, to have uh, one coat of oil, and then we're gonna put two more coats of uh, water base. Water base poly? Yes. Water base poly, great. So we're basically gonna end up with a floor that looks like this. No additional color, 
Clear yeah. Copilot. Definitely, that's what we're gonna get. Yeah, why wouldn't you want that though? That's beautiful. <laughs> that's why we wanna send it. And it's gonna look awesome. I'm yeah. so psyched that we were able to save the original floors that we even had in the begin with. So thanks to you and your brother and your crew, Josiah. It's awesome. Yeah, no problem. All right, pleasure. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming. have a chain link fence in the front of our house just like this one and it's a particular look Jen not for everybody and in this case definitely not for Carol well so the chain link fence here definitely made it a step down and Carol really wanted to upgrade sure. so she wanted that wrought iron look and in the residential areas now the thing to do is using aluminum fencing okay it's great it's affordable and it's beautiful and so I've got Dan and his crew here today. Hey Dan, Dan, Kevin. How's it going? Nice to meet you too. So uh, you are installing our fence for us. Aluminum is the material? Yes, it is. So what do we love about this? This is, it gives you that wrought iron look. Um, it is just as durable, uh, it's cheaper. It's a lot easier to maneuver, a lot easier to set up. Um, and doesn't need any paint, doesn't rust. And the finish, the durability, uh, is this powder coated? You guys put it on, who's putting the finish the on? The manufacturer here? puts it on, it comes just like this, and they put their coating on it. And the great thing is when you cut it, there's no rust like steel. Yeah. You know, with steel you have to prime it and paint it. You know, you don't have to do any of that with this. And, and the price of something like this relative to the chain link that we used to have here, roughly? It's magnitude. pretty similar, it's a little bit more, uh, but you're gonna get you're gonna get the price point out of the style and out of the look. Yeah, that's awesome, all right. It's not like wrought iron price. Yeah. Correct, that. correct, that is much more expensive. But it looks beautiful and it's clean and it's just gonna dress up the front yeah. of this house. Yeah, it's gonna look great. Okay, so I see the panels are in place, but the uh, posts already went in. What was your prep work for these? How did you set these? Yep, so yesterday we came here, uh, this, there was about 20 feet of chain link. Yeah. We took that all down, ripped out the poles, had to take the cement bases out. Uh, then we just set up our string line uh, leveled the poles, set all these in concrete. Uh, we give it a day to set up so they're nice and solid. You know, they don't move around. Uh, and so, then, so what are you doing? You're, you're pouring a little footing, sticking these right into yeah, it wet? Yeah, we're digging and... a hole about two feet deep, putting this in, making it so it's straight with the string line so we have a nice straight line, then filling it up with concrete. Yeah, I got it. It looks like you nailed it, although the heights are a little different. Yep, uh, so the height, when we first set it, that doesn't matter uh, because we're gonna come back the next day and make sure it fits the height of the fence. Oh, cool. You know, we're gonna cut the tops of all these right. to make sure that we have a nice straight line. All right, so you guys ready to install? Yep, I'm gonna measure uh, 49 inches, and that is because we have a 46 inch height on the panels. Yeah. Uh, we give it two inches to show two inches post. Two up here. Yep, and then inch so that we're one inch off the pavement. Gotcha, okay. So I'm gonna go 49 inches here. I like that detail. We're gonna mark this one. And then we're going to go down to the very end and do so the same this thing. Is, this is for your string line, right? Yep, if you this, can is, get the... this is for the top of the pole. Yeah. And uh, we're not even really concerned about level. We just want to be in line with the sidewalk. Yep. So 49 inches. And that's going to give us a straight line, straight top of fence yep. with one inch off the pavement. Cool. All right, so I have this template here that I made. Uh, this is gonna get us all the holes that we need to put our brackets on mm. so that the three rails for the section sit nice and even. Yep, beats Perfect. pulling out that tape measure. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I just do one nice little, little drill here just to get the marks. And then I take it off just and now, spot. now I'll drill all the way through on all three of them. All right, we have a three inch galvanized bolt here. This goes through the middle hole in the bracket with these holes facing down so we can accept the rails of the section. We're gonna go put it right through here. 
same thing, middle hole, outside holes facing down, put the nut on, tighten it, all right? Then we just tighten it up a little bit so it's nice and snug, that's good. All right, and it's just like that. So if you guys want to continue doing that, Perfect. I'll keep drilling. Sounds okay. good, all right. Okay, so this whole front area is coming together. There's gonna be a gate here, and I'd like to put a nice stepping stone as you enter. Piece of granite or something? That... Yeah, granite, a piece of bluestone, something yeah. to just make it clean. And the thoughts are to put uh, some foundation shrubs in, like I want a rose, hydrangea, rose, and then maybe a couple boxwoods. But this whole area is gonna be mulch. If you put grass in here, it's gonna be too hard to maintain and get a mower in and out. Okay. So this fence really cleans it up, presents the front of the house. Yeah. Moving along, Charlie, right? We got the fence up. We got a lot of stuff to go, but a lot of progress inside and a ton of challenges for you. A lot of challenges. Um, let's start with COVID. Right. Kind of affected everybody's life here. Yep. So that was a big challenge, keeping everybody safe. Second challenge, it was a tight budget here, insurance reasons because of the fire. And uh, of course, we have our timing. We have a week to go. Yeah. And we have roughly six subs right now working on different levels everybody's working hard and bringing it all together. And then you've got just the general problem of working in the city. I mean, it is tight, parking is hard, yeah. trucks are coming and going. Yeah, the access is so tight, so. That's right, and then, you know, once we had a snowstorm a couple of times, we had that to right. challenge, right. but. So Carol's been out for a year and a half. She wants to get back in. We got a week to go. You're gonna hit the schedule? We always do. <laughs> you do always do. There's no choice. There's, There's no, no choice. choice There's no choice. All right, well, you heard it here. Charlie says we're gonna be done next week, which means Carol will be back in and we'll have a wrap. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Charlie Silva. And I'm Jen Nawada. For this old house here in Dorchester, one week to go and it's a frenzy in there, right? Yeah, but Sunday, we have Sunday. Next time on This Old House. Welcome to Dorchester, a Boston neighborhood where for generations, families have come to start their lives in the city. This show started here 42 years ago. And as COVID disrupted our lives, we returned to Dorchester with a mission, to restore a family's home that was devastated by a fire. And today, they moved back in. Join us as we celebrate their return.